It's interesting because you talked about imposing will and, right. and all that kind of thing. And my mother, she, again, she only cares about us. I've been told that by my grandmother and, and her that she's only concerned about my welfare. We're not rich, so you must get security by getting with, working with uh, some municipal establishment like the government or the city. Now, I mean, it's always like... I was rather All the just, nerds work for the, the, the establishment. Yeah, I feel that they're <laughs> All the failures. Lives, you know, yeah. If you work for the establishment, you work for the government, <laughs> and you have any brightness in there, they'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you go in there and seek service from those people. You Listen, <laughs> if you ever go to church, and you understand what the preacher's saying, they'll excommunicate you. <laughs> See? My mother, it's like... When I was young, I never really, I was so, I was such a cripple, you know, emotional cripple. I could never make one decision on my own. And, and it's like she always depended on that need in me. And then when I kind of... Well, what, what in, look, what in her is dependent on the need in you? Maybe because I asked for it? No, it's power. power. That was because bullies or tyrants need slaves and subjects, yeah. right? So in other words, in order to be a tyrant, Egos. See, her, your mother has an ego problem. It's playing God. She tried and to see? get my father in. And, and, and in other words, if you can't be a, listen, if you, you can't be a judge unless you have someone to judge, unless you have a criminal. If you don't have a criminal, you can't be a judge. See? You, you see, you can't be, you, you, if you can't be a king if you have no subjects. If you stood in a desert all by yourself with a crown, <laughs> what kind of king are you? <laughs> well, you've got to have subjects. So the people are always trying to make you subjects because the ego requires that. It's so hard to talk to people like that. Like I try to confide in her and say, well, Mom, I have this idea. And it's like, it's immediately... Your mother's try to mom is dead from the know. neck up. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll soon be dead from the neck down. But at that time that happens, she probably won't even know it when, when it overcomes her. The you were saying, go ahead. The interesting thing about it is that, like my father, conversely, and I hardly ever see him that much, but when I do see him, he, rather than try to, you know, mold me and, and just, you know, mold me into what I'm thinking and what I should do, he'll just, he'll give, uh, he'll kind of expand or enlighten me on things that I'm thinking, my idea, and let it be. Isn't that the role a of chance. a father? You haven't got a bad yeah. father then, have you? And it's funny because my but mother resents it, you, the you, fact that, you know, my father, you get along here with him better than I do. And I said, she's Mom, jealous. I, I want to love you too, but it's like, Daddy, he... We talk, and he allows me Does to talk. Does anybody understand what I she's talking about? A lot. <laughs> See, what it is that the, the, that kind of woman, your mother kind, not all women are alike, you know, not all men are, but most men are alike. But we're looking for that nice difference. Like, I hope what you see in me, right? <laughs> um, most women are jealous. The moment a man um, has a little introspection and starts to realize things for himself and doesn't plug in to a woman for his direction and support, she becomes threatened. She, you know, accuses of him of not loving her. See, the truth of the matter is, a man should always love God and seek direction from him more than a woman. And if a man doesn't love God more than a woman, a woman is in control of him, see? And it's the same, we come back to the same in real life. Um, nobody wants you to love more God because then if everybody, if you love God, nobody could motivate you.